The GoPro settings I'm about to share with you are the settings that I've used for all of my Moto vlogging vids to date. I still rock the Hero 7, but you can apply these settings all the way up to the Hero 9. And I do use an ND filter with the settings I'm about to share with you. Now Hero 8 users, I understand that there is an issue with the hyper smooth and using ND filters. There is a workaround which I will share with you in just a minute. Okay, so first before we get started, make sure you've got your GoPro on hand or get a pen and paper and write these settings down or even just screenshot the screen so you can save these for when you're out on the road, you can just and pump it in there. First turn on your GoPro, go into your video settings. The first thing we're gonna do is turn ProTune on. Now I shoot in 4K 30 frames a second. This is up to you if you wanna shoot in 24 frames a second. You just need to make sure that your shutter speed doubles the frame rate, so then you'll make it 1 50th of a second or 1 48th of a second. So because we're shooting 4K 30 frames, we'll be setting our shutter speed to 1 over 60. Field of view, I like it as super view. Stabilization on auto. White balance, I leave it at auto. ISO 100 minimum, ISO max 800. Sharpness, bring that down to low. Color profile, make that flat. This helps you grade it later in post. It's up to you if you're gonna be grading or not. If you're not, then just leave it on the GoPro settings. Raw audio off, mics auto, and boom, they're my settings. Happy damn days. Now, if you go outside with your camera, you'll see that the image is super overexposed. There's a reason for this. Now that the shutter speed is slower at 1 60th of a second, that means that the shutter is open for a lot longer, letting more light in. But this helps you later on for getting that motion blur effect. Now to fix this issue, all you need to do is stick a set of sunnies over the top of the lens. In this case, it's the ND filter. And that'll fix our overexposed issue. These are the ND filters that I use. They're the free wall ones, I love them. They just slip straight over the lens. I've had no issues with them. I had one that I had for about a year and a half and I think a rock must have hit it and just cracked it. But the cheap as man, very worthwhile investment. So it goes from ND4, which is very light tint to ND32. They do go up to a 64 as well, which is very dark. There is no light meter on the GoPro, so it is hard to tell what exposure you're at. You literally just have to eyeball it. Hey, if it's fully bright and sunny, you put your darkest one on. I use my ND32 for when it's super bright, sunny conditions, no trees around, sun is just pounding, no clouds. If it's sort of cloudy, a little bit overcast, that's when I use the ND16, and I haven't really used the 4 or 8 before. Not for what we do anyway, motor vlogging, it's mainly outdoorsy sort of stuff. It's either gonna be very sunny, or it's gonna be overcast, or it's gonna be raining or night time, which you just wouldn't want to use one anyway. But don't let it deter you from getting it. If you just don't like the whole idea about ND filters, they're very easy to use. You just chuck it straight on, boom, and you're good to go. Like, that is it. So easy. And these ones are good because you don't need to take this damn thing off. Two hours later. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've taken this one off before. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so you don't have to do that. So then you can pull you can pull this lens off. So yeah, so some you can just screw on like that, but these ones are awesome. They just smash straight on. Happy days. Yeah, this one's on solid, I've never taken this one off. I'll link these in the description below if you want to go and purchase some of these bad boys. I do dig them. Now if you're having an issue using hyper smooth with an ND filter, apparently sometimes people are getting some wobbly images. I've never had that issue with mine at all. I had actually had no idea that even existed. But I learned that the issue isn't the ND filter itself, it's the slower shutter speed. So the way a hyper smooth works is that it needs a nice clear frame coming in all the time. And so when you slow down that shutter speed, you're gonna have some blurred edges. That's the whole motion blur thing. The GoPro doesn't pick that up very well, the processor doesn't do its job, and you're not gonna get the hyper smooth that you're after and it's gonna end up turning all jittery. But there is a workaround that I've learned. Hopefully this helps you out. Now the best frame rate and shutter speed I've learned to solve this issue is 60 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second. Now that means that the shutter speed's moving a bit faster, so you're not gonna get that crazy epic motion blur, but you will get some and it will be smooth as well. I noticed that the super view doesn't work. This is on the Hero 7. It doesn't work when you're setting the uh, 60 frames per second. See how it goes? You might have to crop a little bit out, not zooming out as wide as you usually would be, which is a bit of a bummer. But again, that could just be the Hero 7s. I don't have a Hero 8, I don't have a Hero 9, I really like the Hero 7s. I've got two of them and I froth. So try those settings if you're having an issue with the whole stabilization thing. I really hope they help you out. Hopefully you can have a bit of fun now on the road. Just get yourself a set of these ND filters and um, boom, punch in those settings and happy days. I'll share my nighttime settings later on down the track as well. It looks pretty sick. It's full on John Wick style. It looks all epic with the blues, sort of like Tokyo. John Wick. And also, if you're looking to improve your audio quality of your motorbike, you want to capture that raw sound 
of your bike screaming as you're hooking the bends, check out this video right here. This will teach you everything about it. Just put it up last week. So it's fresh. All right, guys, ride safe.